At this time, Lisa will be playing the musical preparation of the church's one foundation. we can gather here where right now there seems to be peace here but Lord we pray for your peace around the world we know that you truly are the king of peace the prince of peace and so this is the day we ask for your peace in you alone is found freedom please free our world from conflict please bring about unity in troubled areas let your gracious and glorious peace reign in every heart. Dispel all darkness and evil. Protect the dignity of every human life. Replace hatred with your love. Give wisdom to leaders. God, this day we pray for the most vulnerable. We pray for those who are suffering and those who are fearful. We pray for those most in need. And we give you thanks and pray for all those who are serving in harm's way and for those who serve in the armed forces, especially those from Fort Drum and the 10th Mountain Division. Lord, let there be peace on earth and let it begin with us. We pray this in your name. Amen.
Please join with me as we do the call to worship. Wisdom shouts her warnings in the street. We have come to forsake our foolish ways. Wisdom longs to pour out her spirit on all flesh. We will not shrink from her blessings. Wisdom imparts holy knowledge to save us. We will not shut out the lessons she teaches. Let us worship in spirit and in truth. Our hymn is Christ for the World We Sing, number 568. If you would remain standing and please join in the affirmation of faith, number one or number 881 in the hymnal. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
Please join me in the prayer of confession as printed in the bulletin. Wisdom of the ages, we yearn to forsake our foolish ways and embrace godly knowledge. Cry out in the streets once more that we may hear your voice and drink deeply of your spirit. For we are tired of reaping the harvest of our schemes, and we are weary of eating the fruit of our ways. Bridle our lips, gracious one, that our tongues may speak no evil and utter no falsehoods, but proclaim your glory. In your holy and righteous name we pray. Amen. And now take a moment to pray in silence. This is your chance to talk to God and to share in ways you wouldn't share out loud. But let's take a moment to lift up our hearts with God in silence. Friends, hear the good news. The grace of God can transform our hearts even amidst a cacophony of noise. The wisdom of God beckons to our souls, revealing our world in a different light. In due season, we will yield the fruit of faith in our adventure with God. Do know that your sins are forgiven. And now let's pray together as the Lord taught us by saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Well, I think it's time to welcome our neighbors. I think so, unless you're the only one here. Be careful. That's all I can tell.
Okay, if I could have all the young disciples up front. All the young disciples up front. Ah. All right, come on up, everybody. I never point a pencil like that. Sitting so quietly. Hi, Lily. Well, good morning, everybody. How you feeling after your first week and a couple days of school? Fine. Good. A lot of homework. Tired. Anything else? Stressful. It is stressful. Very scary. <laughs> what, Michael? Oh, I thought you were talking to me. Boring. Oh, I saw pictures. It looks like you were having pretty much a lot of fun. I don't know if I did. I get sometimes I'll see some on the church page from um, your school, but I sometimes see you in pictures too. Yeah. Hey, what do I have here? So you hold a pencil like this, right, when you're walking in the hallway? No. No, no why? Because you don't want to stab people. That's right. No. You always put the, do they still teach you that? Right? You still put your, the point down. So if you stab anybody, it's yourself. You don't accidentally. Like, see, now if I were to poke him, he's getting poked with the eraser. But if he were to get poked with this end, it probably would, it probably would hurt. So my original plan now, if you notice the pencil, you write with it, right? Hopefully with a better sharpened end. But you write with it. And then if you make a mistake, what do you do? You erase it. And if you don't have an eraser on the back of the pencil, then you can get the, you know, if you have a pen with an eraser, you can use that. Or if you have just regular rubber eraser, you can use that. Or the kind that go on the end of the, right? There's all, the, all these different types of erasers. You know, when I was in typing class in 1908 <laughs> with my Smith Corona in school in 1909, um, if, you made a, <laughs> if you made a mistake, we had this little thing you could like put inside of that little ball that does all the typing. You know, that's before the ones that they had in 1903. <clears throat> but the little ball, you know, uh, with the letters that you type on the typewriter would allow you to make a little correction, especially if it were white paper. And I wanted to bring you one of those today, or they have what they call liquid, is it liquid pen or? Uh, white out. White out, thank you. Good Lord, I couldn't even remember that. 1910, I think I learned about that. So I had the white out and you can use that too. But either way, it's easy to make mistakes and it's easy to correct them when you have something that allows you to correct them. But today, now you're going to be downstairs, so you won't hear the message today, but, you know, James is kind of like the, is considered, the, the letter that James wrote in the Bible is actually considered like the New Testament Proverbs because he teaches us how to use words. And you know what? When you say words out of your mouth, it's hard to take them back. And we can't erase them like we can something we make a mistake with a pen or a pencil. You know? So if you say something really mean, somebody's going to remember that, right? You can erase time. You can erase time? Almost. Almost. But you can't figure that out yet. Well, you know what? Sometimes that's why we have to be very careful. And that's what James is doing today. He's trying to remind us of the importance of words and when we use words and how we use them and to think before we speak. How many of you have ever said something that maybe you probably shouldn't have said because you didn't think at a time? Right? Part of our humanness. I'm the first one. 
but I try to be conscious and I try to be aware and I try to pick the words that I think will work. Am I always su successful at it? Probably not, but I try to. I try not to say something, and I try not to make a promise if I can't keep it. I won't even say, I promise, because I hold those words very dear to my heart. And if you want to be able to promise somebody something, you want to be able to come through with the promise, right? Big things. So I hope that you learn that as you grow up, and even as you go to school, that sometimes don't be quick to say something. Think about it before you say it. Because one little word could really hurt somebody. And if you lift somebody up in a word, that can really make their day and change their entire life. You know? It can make your day better. If somebody says, Andy, you the man, he'd be like, yeah, I know I am. But if I said, Andy, oh, man, it's you again, he'd probably be, you're you. No. And I wasn't the only one that just gasped. Oh, well, brothers and sisters, that's another whole thing. There's just not enough room in the Bible to put that. Totally. All right. Well, I'm glad you're here. It's Sunday school. It's back to Christian ed and fun stuff. And I know you guys have more fun than the people up here in the sanctuary. Definitely. Thank you. That just built me right up. How about if I say a prayer, and then you can take something from the treasure box? All right. Do you want to say the prayer, Lily? Yeah? No? You don't have to. You say the amen. No? Okay. No, it's Okay. God, thank you for this day. Thank you for each one gathered here. Thank you for the love. Thank you for our leaders, and thank you for all the stuff that you give to us and bless us with. Help us to be mindful of all that we do. Help us to watch our words and help us to be the best disciples we can be. Amen. This is where we do that song. Amen. Amen, congregation. Amen. Amen. Sing it again now. I'm just kidding. We don't have to. All right. Give me my 10. That's five. 10. There you go. All right. Might be something very different in the treasure box today. As a reminder, but they're Halloween theme. There's one with, you got the one with spiders. How am I going to eat this? Well, you can't eat that. That's for you to remember God is with you in you school. Positive? Or you can have the community bank one if that's better. Are you positive? I'm positive. I'm positive. Are I don't want you to get hurt. <laughs> Okay, our missions minute for today concerns education, education in Africa. As a former educator for 40 years, I'm always uh, interested in what's going on, not only locally, but around the world. And we have a couple of special guests this morning. As a member of the missions committee, I'd like to tell you something that some of you may be aware of, but some may not. The Asbury Women in Faith, as well as the Missions Committee, have contributed fairly generously to MELT, which is Malawi Early Literacy Team. And also our Asbury Quilters donated some hand-sewn school bags for the children to keep their books in. And so it's my pleasure this morning to introduce to you Heather White, who will also introduce a very special guest. 
and uh, we are so happy to have you here. Would you come up, please, and share with us? Good morning. Good morning. I always feel like I'm returning home when I come here. Thank you. I was looking at the baptismal and thinking of my youngest um, who was baptized here and is now way out west on a mule saving fish. At any rate, that's a story for another day. Um, Asbury is near and dear to my heart and watching the children this morning, I was thinking about um, helping with Sunday school class here years ago. It was one of the first projects with MELT and the Sunday school children brought change in and helped to collect funds and then all of you helped to finish sponsoring one of our earlier books entitled I See God Everywhere. And it really reminds us that no matter where you are around the world, we all have the same hopes and dreams. Um, he mentioned many of the projects that you have helped with. The book that the Women in Faith just supported is in draft, and actually our 30 teachers worked with our team this summer to construct a new alphabet book that is sponsored by um, the Women in Faith here and will be published early next year. The funds given from the mission committee last spring helped us to carry in 18 suitcases, three old women, I'll remind you, 18 suitcases and trunks of um, over 2,000 books that were added to our library this summer. Thank you for remembering us, and more importantly, thank you for remembering children very far away from here. It is my honor to introduce to you the Honorable Sam Chirwa. We became friends in 2007 when he was one of the choir members that stayed at my house all summer. And my youngest and myself ended up turning into choir groupies. And we followed them even all the way to Vermont when they performed. The following year, I started my trips to Malawi. This year was trip number 14 for me. Over the years, Sam and I have become really best friends and working partners. He has been the director of MELT since 2015. So I'm in Malawi once a year. He lives in Malawi and keeps our programs running. In addition to directing the Women of Grace Women's Fund, and most importantly, in addition to his job as a member of parliament, he is the youngest member of parliament. So he is honorable, he is wonderful, and he's here to say a few words to you. He just wants to describe school to you. And boy, did your pencil fit right in. Honorable Sam. Uh, good morning. God is good all the time. Um, I'm happy to be in this church, and uh, it's an honor for me. Uh, I've never seen a, a good and beautiful church like this. Uh, when I was coming inside, uh, I said, oh, that must be a pastor. That Reverend looks very young and energetic. So when you came and talked to the, to the kids, I wish I was one of the kids. <laughs> because the topic you picked is exactly what we are doing back home. The pencils, the clients, 
the papers is one of the uh, things which make students, uh, kids, how to read and write. So I just want to thank all of you for the wonderful job you are doing to help kids in Africa, especially in Malawi. The MELT team, which comes to our country, which Heather is running in, uh, in the US here, it helps us a lot because kids back home, they don't have water in their schools, they don't have food in their schools, they look they walk 10 miles, 5 miles to go to school and back. There's no buses there. There is no facilities like books, clients, even a duster. So when Melt came with books and uh, whatsoever they are bringing, it relieves us in Malawi. It's a big help which we could not take it for granted. We are serving 21 schools. 21 schools with thousands of kids. Sometimes in one school, there might be only two teachers, but 600 kids is a very big challenge. So when the MELT team with the, uh, uh, help, they come, they also train the teachers, which is a wonderful gift to us in Malawi. So I just want to say thank you on behalf of Malawi government, because I'm also a member of parliament there. I need to thank you. In fact, when they come all the time, the minister called them to our office to say, oh, thank you so much. This is a thing which we couldn't think you can do to us in Malawi. So thank you so much uh, for the good work you are doing to help us in many ways you can. We take it for granted, and I'm, I'm, I'm here sincerely to also thank the Levland for the job which you are doing. God should bless you all. Thank you. All the time. God is, good. God is good. It's nice when we can hear the differences that are being made, isn't it? It's nice to see that we support one another, not just locally, but even around the world and the, the number of lives that we touch. Then again, that's Asbury, so. Hey, what joys would we like to lift up this morning? Olivia's got her hand in the air. She's the first one. I don't think I've ever seen one go up that quick. Hi, so um, this year's musical for Case is Wizard of Oz. I don't think I announced that yet, but yeah. Uh, Wizard of Oz is a musical this year. Um, it's gonna be earlier this year, so my audition was on Thursday, and Friday the cast list came out, and I am proud to say that this year I will be playing Dorothy Gale in Case Middle, School, Case Middle School's Wizard of Oz. Yay, good job. In November. Friday, Saturday, before Thanksgiving. Before Thanksgiving, that Friday and Saturday. Is there a real toto? No. Oh, well, that works. Good job, Olivia. All right, other joys. Yep, in the back, Judy. Oh, no, it's not Judy. It's behind Judy. I have <laughs> it's a Mary special Ann. announcement to make. Dale and I welcomed a new family member, a little baby boy named Enzo William Netto. Oh, that's great. Congratulations. Okay, there's two down. See, it's not so hard, is it? I spoke too soon. One more, come on, threes. I got one. Oh, thank you, thank you. You gotta have three. It's always three. But at any rate, there's a bus trip this weekend for Sight and Sound. And um, I, we're going to go see Daniel. 
And this is going to be awesome. If you've never been to Sight and Sound, please consider it when we do it again. It, it's, it's so good down there. I want to just hide away mm. and stay there and play in, in, in their productions. It's just wonderful. It takes you away for two and a half hours. It's, it's just awesome. Got right. Yes. I would like to put Dawn Baum on the prayer list. She is in the House of Good Samaritan Hospital with fluid buildup. What was Dawn's last name? Baum, capital B-A-U-M. Okay. All right, oh, and Anne Marie, up front here, Bill. <laughs> she looks scared. We have a joy. Uh, we have a new grandbaby boy. Um, my brother Chip and his wife Sarah had a baby boy. His name is Charles Alfred Wolf. Oh, yay! Congratulations! All right, moving into a time of, of prayers, I do have a message from Lindsay that I'd like to lift up to you. Um, <clears throat> let's see. So Lindsay arrived um, a day or about two days ago to be with Holly and Carl and her nephew, Brett, and niece-in-law, Lisa, and they will stay the duration. Um, <clears throat> here's a message from Carl that um, he would like you to know. These have been difficult days since the last message. I want to be as descriptive as possible as people have been praying for Holly. Uh, for our comfort, peace, understanding, and support during these days. It is the prayers of God's people, our loving friends and family that continue to see us through each day. Throughout this surreal and unbelievable life experience, Holly and I continue to be aware of the power of God through prayer. God's comfort, peace, and undergirding love are so real. We will remain at Hatch Lake until the Lord calls her home. Thank you for sharing the beautiful reminders of Holly's ministry as Corps Officer, writer, composer, musician, costumer, cook, etc., etc. It is well with my soul, for thou art with me. So I wanted to share those uh, sentiments with you. So continue prayers for Holly and Carl and Lindsay and Dan and, and the entire family. So are there any others we want to lift up and under, uh, lift up for prayer? I know in your bulletins there's a modified prayer list. New people have been added. Some remained nameless as far as the last name goes. But if you lift up those names, God knows who you're talking about. Because that's just how awesome God is. Any others? Well, let's move together in a time of prayer. <clears throat> Thank you, Lord, for the many blessings of life. We're grateful for the many people and places that cause us to find joy in our souls. We're thankful for the places of work and ministry, and missions, and the work of the church that reveal to us the gifts you have given to us. We rejoice in your presence in our lives, a presence that at times seems so real that we can touch it, but which indeed is real even when we cannot see it. God, we thank you for our nation. We are grateful that we can dream and make those dreams come true. God, we pray for those who are struggling this day. We pray for those who are waiting for a birth or a death. We pray for those who've made the headlines. 
we pray for and give thanks for the celebration of the arrival of new lives into the world. And to celebrate those joys of a new child. We also grieve this day for those who have lost children. We pray for those who struggle with depression and any sort of mental challenges they chase. God, we know that for some each day is a miracle. We thank you for these many blessings. And we pray for those who work tirelessly but still cannot make financial ends meet. We pray for those who just struggle in health, those who keep on spreading the good word even though they hurt so much inside. Break and bend us until we are working hard to ensure that all people have the necessities of life. Show us a community of faith. Show us believers that no miracles can still happen. Point us to the people you want us to serve and the places where our gifts can be used. And help us to get outside of our realm of comfort and into the areas where your love and grace are most needed. God, we long to be faithful. And we ask that you hear our prayers. We pray in your most precious name. Amen. God calls us to devotion that is pure and faultless. What does such devotion look like? Caring for those in a world with big hands and little hope. Let us give our morning offerings as generously as God has given to us.
gracious and loving God, we are grateful for the many blessings you give to us. May these gifts that we brought forth bring support in your ministry in the church and around the world. Use them for your service, that lives and hearts will be touched by them. May they provide a path for others to know your love and become part of your holy family. We pray all this in your precious name. Amen. Our hymn of preparation is Woke Up This Morning, 2082, In the Faith We Sing. And I hear we're going to have some... Oh, we're going to change it up like this group is going, good God, he's out of the pulpit. Here we go. So stand up, flex. I'm going to lead you into this because I didn't realize when I picked it out, there's no, <laughs> there's no, what was that part? There's no... It's a call and response kind of song. So let me just turn my microphone off, so I'm going to shout. So I can't sing on camera. Oh, wow, that made a difference. All right, so I'm going to sing where it says, you know, where it's no notes, and you're just going to come in, and Lisa will play it once through. Okay. Oh, what number is it? Uh, oh, 2082. In the 2082. talk about words. What is the thing? Hey. <laughs> skipping her part again. Oh, am I? Oh, we got scripture. Yeah. The, don't you want me to read scripture? I mean, really interesting. I'm in timeout. <laughs> I'll preach from here. All right. Our scripture text for today, James 3, 1 
through 12. Let not many of you become teachers, my brethren, for you know that we who teach shall be judged with greater strictness. For we all make many mistakes, and if one, anyone makes no mistakes in what he says, he is a perfect man, able to bridle the whole body also. If we put bits into the mouths of horses, that they may obey us, we guide their whole bodies. Look at the ships also. Though they are so great and they are driven by strong winds, they are guided by a very small rudder wherever the will of the pilot directs. So the tongue is a little member and boasts of great things. How great a forest is set ablaze by a small fire. In the tongue is a fire. The tongue is an unrighteous world among our members, staining the whole body, setting on fire the cycle of nature, and set on fire by hell. For every kind of beast and bird, of reptile and sea creature, can be tamed and has been tamed by humankind. But no human being can tame the tongue, a restless evil full of deadly poison. With it, we bless the Lord and Father, and with it, we curse men who are made in the likeness of God. From the same mouth come blessings and cursings. My brethren, this ought not to be so. Does a spring pour forth from the same opening fresh water and brackish? Can a fig tree, my brethren, real yield olives or a grapevine figs? No more can salt water yield fresh. Here ends the reading of God's holy word. Thanks be to God. I was going to give it from down here, but it doesn't seem right. Oh. So how many of you have heard this scripture from James before? It's a real powerful scripture. He had, to three, he had to throw in a couple metaphors in there for us to understand it if we didn't understand in the first sentence what the scripture was about. Um, <clears throat> for James, he says that words are very important, especially if you are a teacher or if you are a leader of any kind, your words can have an impact, both good and bad, right? For James, the game of words better be used wisely because the tongue can create chaos. Not, not that any of you would know that. And while all of us make many mistakes, right, it's important for those that lead a body or group to use the right words to make the best impact. And as Kathy was reading, like a bit in the mouth of a horse, a controlled tongue can guide a person's whole body in what he or she says and does. James first talks about equating this with a rudder for a ship. Now that little rudder, no matter how tiny, can create damage, can it? If it doesn't go in the right direction, we know catastrophe can happen. Never good. Something so tiny can have an impact. And if you really didn't understand that, that drives the ship, James then continues on with saying, not only do we have to be diligent by taking the wheel, but also we have to, just like, um, <clears throat> we all have, well, I'm gonna move, move back. We all have situations where a simple yes or no um, sometimes just isn't what we need 
to be doing. But whether we are trying to assert our rights or trying to do other things, um, it can take us in the wrong direction if we don't watch what we say and do. But then, let me just grab. Um, <clears throat> and I think we've all been in situations where we've seen that happen. James really makes it clear that by using the tongue, it isn't like an animal that can be tamed by human species. It can be restless filled and it could be deadly poison. Yet we're supposed to go out and preach. So he compares it to the rudder. And then James says, um, gotta find my other one here. There's the rudder. And then we've got, I shouldn't have looked at my clock. <laughs> what was that other example? I can't even think of my own example. The rudder, and then I think it was the bridle, right? The, the bridle. Yeah. But either way, he talks about the importance of our words having an impact on other people. We don't when we speak our words, we have no way to take them back. Have you ever been into a fight with someone and you shared something that you were maybe thinking but wouldn't obviously say and yet you said it? And that person's always going to remember that time. They're not going to be able to take it back. Kind words aren't meant only for friends. They're meant for those that we probably do not like. But we don't have to share it. We should build up. I spoke about last week about how, why do we use, why do we have to tear people down instead of building people up? What, why do we have to live in discourse instead of unity? Why does it have to be that way? Especially if we live in God's image. You can't bless God and bless and curse God's image all at the same time. We need to pay attention to our inner lives, too. Sometimes what's inside can come out if we don't control it. How do we control it? We already know that that tiny little rudder can cause a ship to crash or steer in the right direction. Like my dog. I would love to be able to put him outside, right? All day, but he hasn't adjusted to Watertown. To the point he doesn't know how to be quiet. And I don't want to be the neighbor that gets turned in for a loud dog that doesn't stop. I have one particular window I left open the other day when I left the house. Well, Willow and I left the house. We were down the street, and I'm like, hold up. Like, hold up. I know that, I know that bark. He stuck his head into the screen and was barking and probably barked, I guarantee it, the entire three hours we were gone. I heard him down the road, two stop signs before the house. I know my dog. <laughs> but he doesn't stop. I need one of those things that can control the barking. Not the zapper, because that's, you know, the, right? You put it on their nose and it kind of keeps them from barking. But if he were to say things, he probably couldn't take them back. And neither could we. If we're going to be kind to people who use words wisely, we've got to be the first to cultivate the inner life which allows us to think before we speak, to discern before we speak. We need a vision of life that doesn't put us at the center of the universe because, believe it or not, the world doesn't revolve around us. It revolves around other people. And guess what? Those other people were created in God's image. We need a vision of life that doesn't put us at the center. Because the God who spoke the word of creation and sent the word to become flesh, his son urges us to choose kind words and reflect his character, his life, and his love in all that we do. And in a world where you go to a restaurant and everybody's on this instead of carrying on conversation, 
We forgot what it's like to talk. Am I the only one that sees that? I can't be, right? Talk with one another. Let's recapture the art of using words that reflects God, because you can't get tone and text in an email, right? Or a text. You do it by face and by word. So James is giving us caution. James is letting us know that if we want to be the best that God can have us be, to think before we speak, remember our words can make or break where someone's direction is going. That one kind thing you say might lift somebody out of the doldrums of maybe attempting a suicide. That's how important words can be taken. And words can also lift somebody to a joy and a newfound future they never thought possible because of you. James is considered the New Testament Proverbs because of his love for God and his love for others. And he wants you to take care of them as God takes care of you. Amen? Amen. So the last hymn of the day, we are at that point. I know none of you want to leave and you want ice cream and you want your Sundays and the cherry and the strawberry and all that other stuff. But the last hymn of the day is called, I Sing the Almighty Power of God. It's 152 in your hymnal. If we could stand and sing that together. 152. around the world through our missions and now we go forth as witnesses to lift each other up with our tongue not bring one another down so go forth and celebrate the good news live the good news and share the good news go in God's peace and grace and until we meet again may God hold you in the palm of God's hands amen, amen.